Good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, what an awesome day it is. If you haven't noticed outside, it's just nice and sunny, it's beautiful, and uh, maybe a thought did come across a park. A day in the park sounds like a really good day right now, right? Just a really good thing to do, you know? They will not miss me in church, <laughs> right? Uh, but I'm really glad that you are here today uh, because Man, we're celebrating something great. We're celebrating something amazing, uh, the, the day of Pentecost, right? And now I got to say that, um, well, I grew up a Baptist, right? And I had many Pentecostal friends. And so we would look at this, at Holy Spirit, uh, it, through different lenses for some reason, like through the, like different gauges. Well, Baptists mostly, well, they'll say like, well, uh, Holy Spirit, he, he is a thing, you know, and let's just get it over with, you know, and we can rely on him and stuff like that. And then Pentecostals, they would put a little bit of more, you know, emphasis on Holy Spirit. And, and then we're like, well, 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 who's right? You know, and I just got to say that, well, both, both are right, you know, and, but... Which gauge are we looking at when we're looking at the Holy Spirit? Which lenses are we looking through? I have one interesting story. Um, I, I, like to, I like to work out. So at 4.30 in the morning, I would get up, and uh, I, I like to start my day, and I go to the gym. Sometimes I don't wake up while I'm still in the gym. You know, I'm working out, but I don't feel quite awake. And so the first things I think I do is I hit ellipt elliptical. If you don't know what that is, it's just a very strange looking machine that just, uh, it, it really tests your endurance, right? It's, it's, uh, it's kind of like doing that, right? Just like if you see people doing that, like on this machine, that's me every morning. And um, uh, so I uh, put it on a very high level and, you know, just to wake myself up. And I like to look at my heart rate as I exercise. I, I really want to know, like, want to make sure that I'm not having a heart attack, you know, in, early in the morning. And, and so uh, a couple of days ago, I was doing it, and I was just going really hard, and I'm looking at my heart rate, and I've never seen numbers like that. They were just going up and up and up. And so I'm like, I, I get it, 160 could be okay, but then it's like 180. 195, 215, and now I'm, I'm panicking. I'm panicking because my mind tells me, I think you're having a heart attack, bro. You know, and so I'm still doing this, you know, and I put my, one of my hands on my heart, and I'm like, it doesn't feel like it's about to pop out, but I'm beginning to panic, and so I'm like, kind of like almost stopping, and then I realized, I looked at the calorie count. <laughs> I was looking at the wrong gauge. My heart rate was just fine, but I almost gave myself a heart attack because I looked at the wrong gauge. I was looking at my heart attack through a completely wrong lenses. And when we look at Holy Spirit, what lenses are we looking at? What are we looking through? Are we looking at the lenses of experience? Because that's the only way I seem to know who Holy Spirit is. Am I looking at the lenses of, well, no, this is what my church have done for centuries, and that's the lenses I'll be looking at? Or are we going to look at the scriptures that clearly show us who Holy Spirit is? And as I study and I plunge in myself into scriptures, I get to know who he really is. Oh, man, today's a day that's worth celebrating, guys. It's worth celebrating. Just ask yourself this question. If it wasn't for Holy Spirit, where would you be right now? I wouldn't be here. Neither would you. And so when I think about Holy Spirit, I'll just say this. It is not up to yours or mine interpretation. He is described in the written word of God. His person and his work is also clearly defined by the scriptures. So if we want to be guided by Holy Spirit, if we want to be led by him, then scripture is the first place to look. Who is he? Did you know the Holy Spirit can be offended? Because the Bible says so. 
And I'm not really understanding this one, but Jesus says, like, hey, you can, you can say anything against me. You can say anything against the Father. But, man, you blaspheme the Holy Spirit. It's a big no-no. Did you know that we can quench him? Did you know that he is the one that imparts all the gifts that we have? And he's the one that leads us? And he's the one that guides us? Man, well, you can find all of that through the scriptures. You can find it in the written word of God. It really does matter where you look, because where you look matters. Either it will confuse you or put you on the right track. And so today, I want us to kind of go through the written word, the Bible. What does the Bible say about the person of the Holy Spirit and about his ministry? And first thing I want to say is this. This is worthy of all praise. This is worth celebrating. This is my first point here. We are sealed with Holy Spirit. So if you're ever like looking for a reason why I should be celebrating a Holy Spirit, uh, you are sealed with Holy Spirit, uh, all right? And you notice that uh, this is my personal um, thing here. I'm, I'm not putting the word the in front of Holy Spirit, and that's not because English is my second language, uh, but simply because I choose to do so, and I do say a lot of really wrong things from the stage, obviously, when it comes to English, but I mean to do this one. Uh, we're not, Holy Spirit is a person of God. He's a triune person of God. Holy Spirit is a person. He's not an it. He's not a thing. He is a person. And so we never say the Jesus. We say Jesus. And so I choose to say this. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Why is this so important? I want us to look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. Paul says, and when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you Holy Spirit, whom he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. It's such a great passage. And we can dwell on this for a little bit where you could just look in it, at this passage and say like, yes, yes, God has given us the Spirit that he's promised. And with this Spirit, you know, his, this Spirit is a is guarantee that he will, God will give us the inheritance. And I'm looking at this NLT version and I'm not really liking it. Okay, so this is true. This is true. But there's such a, so much, a, there's a deeper meaning behind this. This passage points out two important things. And verse, uh, in verse 13, in the NLT version, like here, it says, uh, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit, whom he promised long ago. I want to look at Greek version. I'm going to have that on the screen right now. Um, this sounds like or looks like uh, something from the Lord of the Rings. Right, just just pull that out, and uh, I think Greek looks amazing, right? And uh, so I'm not gonna have you repeat this, or nor am I gonna try to pronounce this because uh, I I'll butcher it. But I'll tell you what this means, right? This is the way uh, verse 13 is written, or part of verse 13 is written. It says. Uh, the first word right there, it's actually an English three word, three words in English, right? You are sealed, all right? The second word right there is with the. And then the third word, the capital letter there, spirit, spirit of the promise, all right? So you are sealed with the spirit of the promise. And it's such an interesting uh, uh, Sentence here, right? It's not that he, oh, there's just a promise. No, you are sealed. The word sealed, and uh, I'm going to pronounce this one. Uh, uh, it's uh, pronounced as, um, well, sorry, now I'm going to pronounce this one just yet. It will be translated as to seal or to stamp for security or preservation. When we look at the very first word, so the very first word means that a stamp of preservation or preservation. So I'm thinking uh, maybe you have never done pickles before, 
right? Uh, you put the pickles, uh, you know, cucumbers or whatever in the jar, and you put whatever liquids you put in there, right? And then, then you take that lid and you seal it, right? And so the pickles are, are sealed in that jar. My dad is a beekeeper. He puts, uh, he puts honey in the jars, and then he seals the jar, right? And it's just kind of closed in. And so we have another word that's been used uh, in the scripture is when Jesus was uh, buried in the tomb, right? And it says the tomb was, what, sealed. Now, we can imagine that it was closed with a big, big rock, but seal also meant something else. Every king had a signet ring. Not because it was pretty, but it had his signature on it or his face or whatever you call it, right? And every time king sends out a letter, they put some wax on the letter, and then he puts his signet ring into that wax, and he puts a seal on that letter. That means only the one that who, who the letter is to can open this letter. Otherwise, you will be punished by law. And if the king seals, no one can open that letter. It is yours. Only yours. And when I'm looking at this specific translation, when I'm looking at the words of God, it says that you have been sealed. Man, you can think of it like I've been put in this jar of salvation and I have been sealed with Holy Spirit. All right, we can roll with that. I ain't going out of that jar because I've been sealed with the Holy Spirit, right? He's on top and I'm not going anywhere. I am not escaping the assurance of my salvation. But I do like the one where the signet ring of God is imprinted on my heart now. Holy Spirit who lives in me is the seal of God. That is a promise that one day as I stand before the Lord, he'll say, where's that letter? And I'll give it back to him. And the promise that he's made to me will be kept because I have the seal. Because I have the seal. So, we have this term that we use when we get a loan for a house. Locked in. A locked in interest rate, right? We have been locked in. Well, I bought a house over a year ago, and we're like, oh, we need, we need that interest rate. All right, we, we just we need to make sure that we lock it in. It's a 30-year plan, right? And so I locked it in. You know what happens when I lock it in? That interest rate stays. It doesn't matter what happens to my economy, to our economy. It doesn't matter what happens within those 30 years. It is locked in. It is sealed. It's locked in. And so it's interesting when the Lord, through Holy Spirit, when he gets a hold of you and me, and when he gives us that salvation, you are locked in. Hey, you might be on a 30-year plan. You might be on a 70-year plan on this planet. You are sealed. You are locked in. Through Holy Spirit, God provides us with the security seal that promises us the assurance of our salvation. My salvation is locked in. Holy Spirit. Here's the second part of this passage that I want us to look at in verse 14. It says, the Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. Now, the Greek word for guarantee is, ready? Do we have the word? All right, all right. <clears throat> it's Arabon. All right, let's say it with me. Arabon. I'm very sure we pronounced it wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> that word means a pledge. It's a pledge that is a part of the purchase money or property given in advance as security for the rest. Aragon, pledge. Down payment, meaning that I'll, I'll give you more. Here's, here's my security. Here, keep it. I'll give you more. That's a promise. And so in here it says, not only are we sealed with the Holy Spirit, are we carrying the signet ring of God? We, God says, I'm giving you Holy Spirit for what? Just so you know, 
Holy Spirit means that I will be back. I will be back and I will give you what I promised, which is life eternal, which is life with God, which is so many beautiful things that the word of God promises. God says, I have it for you. You have Holy Spirit. That means you will receive what is promised. What is Holy Spirit? Who is Holy Spirit? Well, Holy, Holy Spirit is God. Why do I have him? Because he is a promise. He's a pledge. Holy Spirit has been deposited in us, guaranteeing the trustworthiness of God's promise that both our present and our future are secure in Him. We are His, and He is ours. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit guides us into a life of truth. So Holy Spirit, we're sealed with Holy Spirit, and this is His ministry. Holy Spirit guides us into a life of truth, worthy of all praise. In John 16, 13, it says, When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth, and He will not speak on His own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. Now, this is one interesting passage because we tend to pay attention to different things. And uh, like, for instance, says, well, he comes, he will guide you into old truth. Do you feel like you've been guided into old truth? Do you feel like everything you know and everything you do is... In your opinion, just like, yeah, that's absolute truth. No, we're just kind of looking and we're searching. But does he guide me? Absolutely, right? And so, but we tend to take this out of context. And then he will tell you about the future, right? He will tell you about the future. We tend to take that out of context. Well, since I have all the spirit, I want to know the future. He, well, sometimes he gives you glimpses of future, but he doesn't really, you know, that's not all about that. Not so much. What is this all about? Well, let's, let's focus on one thing. Spirit of truth comes, he will do what? He will guide. He will guide you into God's truth. So what, you know, notice that this was a conversation between the disciples and Jesus. It wasn't a conversation between you and Jesus. It wasn't a conversation between me and Jesus. It was a conversation between Jesus and his disciples. Does this apply to me? Of course this applies to me. But what about the disciples? How did Holy Spirit guide the disciples into all truth? And how did that help us? Or does that help us? So I'm thinking about this and I'm, all right. He guided the disciples into setting the foundation by writing down what they've learned from Jesus himself. So he guides, the, it says that he reminded them. And Jesus says, they, he will remind you of what you have learned, right, to the disciples. And so they set the foundation by writing what they have learned about Jesus himself. Matthew was led to write the truth on the account of Jesus. Luke was led by Holy Spirit to research and interview those who walked with Jesus. And he wrote an account of Jesus' life and the acts of the apostles. Paul was led to write the truth about God, God's grace, and salvation. So he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Peter was led to share the teachings of Jesus with the persecuted church. So he wrote First and Second Peter. James was led to share the teachings of Jesus with the scattered Jewish uh, believers. John, John loved the believers, and he was led to write an account of Jesus' story. Uh, to the Jewish believers, followed by 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Jesus says he will lead you, he will guide you into all truth, and what we're reading right now is Holy Spirit guiding Jesus' followers into all truth, and we benefit from it because we continue to read from that truth, and we continue to build our lives on that truth. And remember, it says that I, he will tell you the future, that same John who wrote the Gospel of John and 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John was actually placed before the sanctified, or I mean, I'm sorry, glorified Jesus Christ who told them about the future of the church and the future of the world. 
Holy Spirit guided John into the presence of glorified Christ, and John wrote the book of Revelation that was written for all believers as a glimpse into the future of the church and the world. So Jesus' words were fulfilled. He says he will guide you to his disciples, and he did. So all these wonderful books were written. The future was shown. But what does it do to me? How does this affect me? The truth that the disciples were led benefits me greatly, benefits you greatly, because he uses the written word of God to guide us into holy and God-pleasing lives. So as he led the disciples into writing all the truth about God, he's using that specific truth to guide you into a holy and God-pleasing life. Through the written word, he guides us into the truth about the Father. Through the written accounts and letters to the church, he guides us into the truth about the Son. And again, through the written word, he guides us into the truth about himself. He reveals to us the triune nature of God. And through the word, he tells us how God is to be worshipped and how he is to be viewed and how he is to be treated. It is through the word. And if I am not reading the word, I will never know that truth. And if you want Holy Spirit to guide you in to the truth, in the truth, then the word of God must be open before you daily. Stop relying only simply on your experiences. They're great. But there is so much greater when these experiences are enhanced by the knowledge from the written word of God. The written word of God tells us how to worship God. The written word of God tells us how to treat him, how to view him. So he is a guide that speaks to our hearts. He's a guide that leads us unto the paths that bring glory to God. And through the scriptures, he describes himself and how he works. That is so we do not confuse himself for some other spirit. So Holy Spirit leads us into the truth about us. It tells you where you stand. It tells you a sinner about his sin. And it tells a child of God about Well, about his uh, part in God's family, right? He tells us about ourselves, about our sinful nature. He talks to us about our futile works, our hopelessness without God, and our need for him because without Holy Spirit, we cannot even proclaim Jesus as Lord. Without Holy Spirit, I cannot even proclaim Jesus as Lord. You know, the funny thing is, we, Chris and I, we were praying in, our, uh, in my office there, and we're like, well, it's the day of Pentecost. We want to pray. We want to pray so we would give Holy Spirit uh, respect where it's due. And then I realized I need Holy Spirit to give him that respect. I need Holy Spirit to give him that glory. I can't even glorify Holy Spirit without Holy Spirit being involved into into this whole process. So how badly do we need him? I can't even call Jesus as Lord. I can't even cry out to God as Abba, Father, without Holy Spirit. I can't even come and ask Holy Spirit for advice, for guidance, without Holy Spirit actually guiding me to do that. So through the word and special revelation that is cemented in the written word, he continues to teach us to live a life that glorifies God. Let me ask you a question. How has he been guiding you? How has he been guiding you? Listen, we just, we just looked at Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. They've been guided to, to write the truth about God, and, and they've been guided to preach the gospel and, and all, all the way until to their death. How has he been guiding you? And I just kind of like look back. I was 13 years old, and it was Holy Spirit that simply, uh, as I was laying in my bed trying to go to sleep, simply just came hard upon me and began to show me my sinfulness. 
and begin to show me the need for salvation. And I remember that day where I just began to weep really hard as a 13-year-old child, just repenting of my sins. It was Holy Spirit who guided me into repentance and who told me or showed me the need of that, right? And then I walked away. I walked away from the Lord. Three years later or something, I, I, I hear a young man pray, and that man prays with such passion, and I whispered to myself, Oh, God, all right, if you want me to follow you, I want what this young man has. And only three days later, this young man is standing on my porch, and he says, hey, God put it on my heart to disciple you. Well, it is, if it's not Holy Spirit guiding this young man, and it's not, if it's not Holy Spirit guiding me to ask for this help, then who is? He did do that. He guided me. And then there was a time when... When I was thinking, like, oh, God, you got to use me somehow. I want to be used. And it was, uh, it was Thursday uh, service in our church, and my father came out, comes up to me, and he says, all right, are you going to preach anytime soon or what? I'm only, it's like, what, 17 years old or something. I've never preached in my entire life. And I said, it was by Holy Spirit that he came up to me, and he invited me into this. And by Holy Spirit, I randomly just said, next Thursday. And it was a dumb decision on my behalf. I'm like, I never preached. I'm like, right, next Thursday I'll preach. And it was by Holy Spirit, uh, th through his guidance, that I actually couldn't sleep at night, but I was consuming the word of God like a crazy man, writing everything I could. I just couldn't stop. And next Thursday was my next sermon, my very first sermon. And you know what? I've never stopped since. It's been 22 years or something since, I've been, uh, since I started. I never stopped because Holy Spirit guided. When I was 18 years old, I began to feel very lonely. And I'm thinking, I don't know why. I'm just surrounded by friends and there's this crazy loneliness. God, will, will God, lead me. What do you want from my life? And God sends me a pastor. He's a Mexican pastor, uh, Pastor Joel, right? And he says, Alex, I felt the same thing. It's just simply saying that God says that you are not meant to be single. And I looked at my myself and I'm like man I hope so you know right so I and uh, I had some issues you know with the way I look at myself right and and so short time later I'm praying to God God you, Abraham gave, you know, just wanted a specific wife for his son. God, I don't want to date. God, I don't want to date. I don't want to do anything. You know, you know, I just give me the one. Who is she? And I remember praying that prayer. I said, like, no, I'm not dating God. I want you, I want you to show me who my wife is, right? And so six months later, I'm just randomly talking to you. Olga, who is now my wife, and uh, had absolutely no interest. We were just, like, just uh, friends. And, and as we're talking, that prayer word per word comes to me, and I'm, like, looking at her. I'm, like, oh, my God, that's my wife. We're not even dating. And Holy Spirit led me to pursue my wife. 21 years later, four children later, two children later like, we're, we're, it's good. <laughs> good. I like it. I remember simply, we were already married. We had two kids already, three actually. And I'm walking around my house just enjoying the view. And next thing I know, I'm just on the floor crying, weeping so hard. I can't get up. I remember trying to get up. I have no strength. At the same time, I'm feeling forgiveness and guilt and all of that mixed together and this joy And that was an anointing because soon after, Yuri, Serge, and I were sitting in Denny's. We we're like, something's happening. Holy Spirit, what are you doing? You're going to plant the church. Here we are. Now, this is just the story of my life. What's your story? How has he been guiding you through the written word and through experiences? How has he been guiding you? Would you give him glory for where you are at now because he's guided you there? <laughs> Through the written word, he guides us into the truth about the Father. Through the written accounts and the letters of the church, he guides us into the truth of the Son, about the Son, about himself, about us. And finally... <laughs> Not only are we sealed, my salvation is guaranteed, just so you know. 
I'm dying, I'm meeting the Father. My salvation is guaranteed. I have the seal. But he doesn't leave me. Like through life, I'm walking and he guides me, right? So that's another beautiful thing. Here's a third beautiful thing. Holy Spirit searches the mind of God and reveals God's thoughts to us. He searches the mind of God and he reveals God's thoughts to us. Have you ever wondered what God thinks about you? He searches the mind of God. Look, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 through 12, it says, But it was to us that God revealed these things by His Spirit. For His Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit. So we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. And so in this specific verse, the Apostle Paul teaches us that Holy Spirit searches and reveals deep things of God to us us little disclaimer if you believe that holy spirit doesn't know something and he needs to search for it to find an answer you have wrong theology he knows all things and the reason why we have the word search is because we search we want to know all right, and we, it's, it's something to connect us with, but I want you to understand that Paul does not mean that the Holy Spirit does not know the mysteries of God, and that's why he searches for them, so he would find bits and pieces of information. The verse simply describes Holy Spirit as the one who intimately and fully knows the mind of God, because he is God. He intimately and fully knows the mind of God, and so... And therefore, he imparts his knowledge on us as he sees fit. Really, I really want to know how the stock market is going to do next week. And I pray to Holy Spirit very often, right? God, like, why well, is that the right decision? Uh, should I invest? When I invested into crypto, I totally listened to the wrong spirit somewhere, right? Just... Uh, we would love that, but he imparts that knowledge in us as he sees fit. And here's what he has revealed to us. And again, I'm going to revert back to the written word. A special revelation was given to us who are saved through the gospel. Salvation by grace through faith, the gospel of Jesus Christ is a revelation of a mind of God. And that is the <laughs> it is the highest and truest wisdom found in life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So this salvation is the revelation of the mind of God. It's a revelation. Knowing that we are God's children is the revelation of the mind of God. Again, Holy Spirit searches the mind of God and testifies to us. In Romans 8, 16, it says, For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. Now, how many of you experience that, where Holy Spirit affirms to you that you are a child of God? How many times were you in this position where you are just, you, you feel so sick and tired of yourself, where you're just like, you don't even want to raise your eyes towards heaven. You don't even want to pray. You don't even want to talk to God because you're just a, such a nasty human being, right? Talking about myself. <laughs> and at the same time, Holy Spirit, just through the written word, no, you're sealed. You're mine. I love the passage where Jesus says that, no, 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 no one can snatch you away from my hand. No one can. Not even you. you somebody said, well, I can jump out of his head. No, you cannot. You know, I, I, I had children, and I know what it's like when the three-year-old tries to get away from me. <laughs> Boy, you can try all you want. That's grip is pretty good. No one's taking you. No, not even you, even if you want to. And so many times my children told me, I don't like you, I, I want to move out, three years old. You know. <laughs> Nobody, you're not going anywhere. You're mine. 
You're mine. I'm your father and you're my son. And so, so many times we come to God and Holy Spirit is just like, hey, you're mine. You're a child of God. Knowledge of God's wonderful grace is a revelation of the mind of God. When we mess up and we're afraid to pray, Holy Spirit searches the mind of God and says in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. Dude. Have you heard that from God? That it's just, oh, my grace is all you need. But God, I'm an addict. I have an addiction. My grace is all you need. No, no, God, get, get this away from me. I, I want this to be God. No, no. My grace is all you need. You know, and I, when I was struggling with pornography back in the day, and I remember praying this prayer. I'm like, God, take this away. If anything, take it, this away only. And I just wanted God out of my life. And I literally, this verse is the only verse that would pop up in my, in my head. No, my grace is all you need. I'm like, no, I don't need your grace. I need this gone. And then when I realized that his grace is all I need, that's when the other thing was gone. God says, rely on my forgiveness and my love towards you. Rely on that. Know that this is what gives you salvation and builds up a relationship between you and me. The rest, let me take care of that. When he speaks to us, he speaks on the message from God to you. It says that he will not speak on his own, but he will tell you what he has heard. So, I will conclude. There's something wonderful about all of this. Holy Spirit, who intimately knows the mind of God. <laughs> okay, wait for this one. Okay, Holy Spirit, who intimately knows the mind of God, lives in you. It blows my mind. Somewhere deep inside, the mind of God lives in me also. <sighs> this is crazy. Uh, so why not lean on the spirit that lives in us as we read God's word? Why not pray when we read the word of God and just ask God to reveal his word to us? He can guide us through God's mind. Because the written word of God is literally God's mind, you know, and now the Holy Spirit who intimately knows God's mind, and as I open the word of God, he can guide me through God's mind. Isn't that amazing? Why not lean on the Holy Spirit that lives in us when we are at crossroads? Why not? Well, why do we keep making mistakes? We, you know, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. Why not lean on the one who knows intimately the mind of God? He can lead us in the right direction. I would rather rely on the mind of God in this life rather than on my own. And the Holy Spirit who knows the mind of God gives us the right words to say when our loved ones are hurting, when we share the gospel, or, or, or when we impart wisdom. He gives us the right words to say when we praise God through the words of adoration. He gives us the right words to say when we worship God in prayer. Sometimes we can't even pray, but in Romans 8 it says, but Holy Spirit prays for us. Man, why not take advantage of such great opportunity and completely surrender to Holy Spirit that sealed us, who guides us, and who reveals God's thoughts to us. Why not? And I want us to bow our heads in prayer right now. As the worship team comes up, I want us to just simply just let this one sink in. Holy Spirit, please remind me of how you've been guiding me. Maybe... You need guidance, and this is the time to pray, God, I need guidance. Maybe you need a revelation, and this is the time where you pray, God, I need a revelation. Please help. You should know, and you should know this very well, that the one that knows the mind of God intimately lives in you, so the mind of God is at your disposal. Go ahead. 
walk into that kitchen, go into that pantry. Take what you need. Father, we thank you. We thank you for Holy Spirit that guides us through this life. Father, we thank you that you gave us a deposit. You gave us Holy Spirit, and now we know that we, since we have them, your promises, are, they're coming. Oh, you're going to fulfill that promise, Lord. My room in heaven is probably complete. And that's a promise I believe. Oh, eternity with you is going to be great. And that's a promise I believe. I believe because Holy Spirit lives in me. Father, thank you for, for sealing us with Holy Spirit. And because of that, you look at me through the blood of Jesus Christ. And you look at me as a saint. You look at me as the one who... Oh, who is perfect, Lord. And by, by far, I'm not perfect at all. We are not perfect, Lord. But we are sealed with Holy Spirit. And there's nothing else that can separate us from the love of Christ. Amen. Nothing. Because we are sealed. We thank you for that. And so we, we sing praises to you and we glorify you, Father, for the works of Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, well, I thank you so much personally for guiding me and leading me and revealing the mind of God to me through my entire life, God. Thank you so much. We praise you. Amen.